I think you should embrace it. You think you should turn him up some? I definitely think you should embrace it, bro. Cause it's not no homo, but it's not like you're an ugly nigga, you know. I mean, I be, I've seen some ugly Baltimore niggas. <laughs> <laughs> You've seen them too in that studio, nigga. <laughs> what's what's probably the weirdest shit you seen in the studio, like when nigga recording? Weirdest shit. Um, I don't know. Probably like a nigga that just keep on coming in and out, and just like keep coming in the, in the studio, out the studio, in the studio, out the studio. Like he even on the phone or. You feel me? Like, it just be just a little annoying shit like that. Like, that shit be weird to me. Wow. Like, why don't you just sit down and just, you know what I mean, chill? They be doing, like, hella other shit. Yeah, like, that's why I don't bring nobody to the studio with me. So, do you have, like, your favorite people to record with? Favorite people to record with? Yeah, like, you have, like, a favorite go-to person. I think it's probably, what, artists or engineer? I mean, I'll start with artists. That's more, like, people would know of an artist. Wow. I ain't gonna lie, nah, it's, it's, it's somebody that I do like, I like going to the studio. It's a dude named Grip, he ain't from Baltimore, he's from Atlanta. It's a dude that I'm locked in with, that's my guy right there. Like, mm-hmm. Me and him been locked in for like five, five six years now? Mm-hmm. Five years. Yeah. Okay. Since I was 20. Oh, shit. Um, I'm sorry we didn't do an intro, we good? We running? Sorry we didn't do the intro, $20 million podcast, we back in here with another banger. We have the producer. Represent, can you, are you still representing 808 Mafia? Yeah. Oh, yes. One, one of the legendary 808 Mafia producers, the one and only 808 Skull, Whip It, you baby. Hope, you hope. What's up, what's up? Oh, I'm sorry, because you, you don't hear the applause. Mm-hmm. It's like, in the, in the headphones, it sounds like it's like 30 niggas back there mm-hmm. and there's people clapping. But how you doing? What's up? You cool, bro. I can't complain. Mm, okay. I I'm okay. You know, just another day in this hot ass room. <laughs> You really need to get this situated. You need to call cool, somebody. No, I ain't gonna lie, I'm cool. I'm you good? good. Yeah, I'm it's probably because I was moving around. I need to. I took the hood off. The, this, this shiesty, this shiesty. Uh, what's, what's, what's going on? I, I, we, we need to talk. We don't really have to go into detail why our first interview didn't drop. Because to me and you, it's our second time meeting. Mm-hmm. But to them, it's our first time. Mm-hmm. So, y'all missed out on a lot of gems, you know? <laughs> um, if not, do you want to give them like a quick, like, Two sentence rundown, like, yeah, it's, it's who it is, and this is what it is. Shit. I mean, nah, it, it ain't really too much to talk about. I just, I just have, you know, going through shit, you know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm not really like a public type of dude, you feel what I'm saying? Like, I'm, my life real private. And if you in my life, then you know. You can feel me if you know, you know. Mm-hmm. So I just, I, ain't, I don't be going in too much at all. Like, mm-hmm. I know, I know. Since I know since our last interview, I've just been watching you. You be on live cooking up. You really, be, really be cooking up. Tell me about, tell me about your work ethic. Like, do you just? That's the first thing you do when you wake up. Shit, no, I ain't gonna lie. First thing I do, I'm taking care of my son. You mm-hmm. feel me? For us, that's what it, that's what it is. First, it's father first. You feel me? How's fatherhood been treating you? Shit. He got his days, but shit, it's good for the most part. This nigga, if you if y'all didn't see it, this nigga just lit up like a goddamn like a like a like a like a. This nigga just lit up like a light bulb. Yeah, that's shit. that's that's beautiful. My boy, yeah, yeah. But uh, I mean, I mean, look, father got his perks though. Like you get to watch him grow up. You feel me? I'm 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 watching him grow up. I'm watching him get smarter and moving different every day and just doing different things. Mm-hmm. It fills my heart. What's what's been if I mean I, we don't have to get too personal in the interview, but it's just a, it is kind of is a personal question I'm about to ask you on questions on camera. What is some of what has been some of the favorite things about fatherhood that you can say for niggas like me that's not a father? Shit, just like just seeing him like he likes sports. Like I ain't growing up, I play sports. Like I play football. Mm-hmm. You feel me? So just seeing him liking that stuff and just you know liking basketball and playing with the you know baseball and all that like he running around the house you feel me saying touchdowns stuff like that you feel me like that shit cool to me is he a ravens fan i mean look he could be whoever he want i'm putting the ravens on you <laughs> chant for the ravens every sunday that's what know? we need to hear okay straight up but i mean he got a little lamar jersey and all that mm-hmm. that's hard Okay, that's okay. We're gonna we're gonna move away from the personal stuff. We came here for the music. We need to talk about music. Mm-hmm. Um, any 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 of any of your favorite pieces that's came out recently that that you've been a part of? I, I mean, 
I mean, I got shit with Chaz that's out right now. Um, OTR Chaz. Mm. Um, I got something that's out with Scola right now that's been banging. Um, I mean, other other than that, like right now, I'm just I'm working. Like, I'm grinding. Like, I'm I'm building up my catalog right now. Mm. Your catalog is strong. I'm listening, just listening to the now. Do you do every beat? Do you make? Do you put it on your Instagram? No. So the ones that you don't put on them motherfuckers are probably slap. I mean, I give you feel me. I give a taste, mm. but it's, I got a lot of different shit. So I got a lot of crazy shit going right now. So. Mm. Crazy shit like what? Like try to just try to try to vibes, des- the, describe try to describe the vibe. The vibe that I'm on, like like the uh, the whole drive behind every beat, like. I got a different mood for different beats. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, but the shit I've been dealing with the past couple months, you feel me? Like, I've really been putting it in my beats. Mm. It feels it's like it's honestly it's hard. It's 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 you can't say this for every producer, every person that makes beats, but like it feel like you can you can feel something in the beats. Like it feel like that shit is like you don't even most of the times you need a you need a rapper to the rap on top of you know just to make it whole. But it feel like it's whole just by itself. You know, mm-hmm. it's authentic. Mm-hmm. Um, talk about talk about some of the things that cultivated that sound. Like some of the key things that maybe you listen to that inspire you. Like, shit, I ain't gonna lie to you. Like, I listen to like a lot of different types of like music. As far as when it comes to, like rap, like I listen to different, you know, flows, different sounds, d- different states. Like you know, you got Chicago, Florida, New York. You got L.A. Then you know Atlanta, and you got Baltimore. You feel me? Like. I listen to everybody, so mm-hmm. it's, like, when I make beats, like I'm not making beats for a specific person, but I'm making that shit with that bounce, you know. Let's say a Chicago rap with cooking on, mm-hmm. feel me? But my beats, and if you can, if you a real artist, you can rap on any of my beats. Mm-hmm. No, for real. Yeah. Um, before we go any further into this interview, I do want to say thank you for the smoke for the smoke session that we had before this right. interview. I I can I can confirm and say that. 808 Skull has the rapper weed. He had he had the pack and all that. It was it, it was great. Um, <laughs> talk about um, what what are some of your things that you what that damn loom. <laughs> that shit dangerous. <laughs> oh shit. We had we gave him two we we gave him two choices. It was either the Luna the Luna Zul or it was either the Jose Cuervo. This nigga this nigga hit one of these. He was like yeah the Luna. I'm gonna get the Luna. <laughs> talk about some of the. Some of the things go. Let's go back to the. Let's talk about some of the things. Like, what do you before you make a? Is it like a certain thing you do? Do you like to go on the run before you make beats? Do you like? What is your pregame? Shit, I smoke. Hmm? <laughs> That's a good answer. Ain't nothing like just sitting down, rolling you a blunt. You feel me? And then just sit down, just let that shit. You know what I mean? Let your fingers and your mouse pad do the talking. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Shit. I don't go into making beats thinking about shit. Like I don't. I just make beats. Like. Mm. And like I said, it's all off my mood, mm-hmm. what I'm going through, what's going on, whatever I'm feeling, you feel me? Or with just what general vibe I'm in on that, that time. Okay. Now, other than that, it ain't no, I'm just smoking, making beats, taking a break. You know, I, I watch my shows, go back to making beats. Or if I'm going to the studio, I'm in there locked in. What shows you be watching? You be watching, what, uh, what you be watching, yeah. Baddies with your girl? You be watching the two every Sunday. I be Sunday? watching some some shit like she had me on some different, some crazy shit, some love shit. What? Uh, Ninety Day Fiance. Love is blind. Love is blind. <laughs> and I she had me on some shit like that. Uh-huh. Um, we be watching a lot of shit together though. Like it ain't just shit like that. Uh-huh. Like I watch like uh, Blue Bloods. Blue Bloods. Okay. I just fuck with them type shit. Okay. I just, that was kind of that was kind of that was kind of a side note. <laughs> To the but what I really question I want to ask you uh how and to to this day how long has it been you've been making beats? Um, going on what is it twenty twenty three? Nine years. Mm-hmm. Nine years. And but I've been I've been taking it seriously. Like I've been I've known how to make beats for nine years. Mm-hmm. I was making them consistently. You know, I was just getting I was learning. Mm-hmm. But like taking it seriously and just. Put, get trying to get placements, getting the catalog together, like fucking with 808. Like 808 been for three years. I probably been really taking it seriously for probably like six, seven years. Mm. Like, 
You said you've been with 808 for three years. Mm-hmm. Oh shit! Talk about you said you you said you knew how to make beats nine years ago. What was going on? What was what was really going around going around? What was going on around your life during that time that made you want to get into it, or is it something you always thought about? Shit, nah, I ain't really I ain't really thinking about making beats like shit. Even nine years ago, I wasn't thinking about it like it was just something that somebody taught me. You feel what I'm saying? Um. You know, uh, you know Pyrex, right? Yes, of course. Yeah, Pyrex, he the one that taught me how to make beats. Shit. Oh, yeah, yeah I remember you said that last mm-hmm. time. Yeah. yeah. He taught me how to make beats. Like, he taught me the ba- the basics in the beginning, you feel me? Where was, where was Pyrex when he was teaching you how to make beats? Shit, I mean, when he was, like, in where he was at in his career, or? Where he was at in his career, yeah. Shit, like, I think, it was before he went to Atlanta. Mm. Like, it's, he was still here. Like, he was still living here. And this is when he made me when we uh when he taught me how to make beats we was going to high school yo like that's when he first tried to teach me mm. we went me him and uh OTR Chad went to the same school like, uh, Chad's been rapping like and y'all was all cooking no nah, we weren't all cooking together at the time no nah, like we all knew each other but it was just I knew Rex like I was cool with, I was with Rex you feel me Chad's I was cool with like it was on a separate tip you feel me and then like I just all that shit just came together like What's 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 been up with Pyrex? Have you been up with him? I ain't gonna speak on that. You ain't gonna. So you're not gonna speak on that. Okay. Um. Okay. So you be said, cool though. I'm, I'm gonna give him his respect though. Like on a, on a as an artist, like I watched him evolve. Mm-hmm. Like he he wanted he damn sure one of the pioneers come out of Baltimore. Like mm-hmm. and he definitely shaped how music. You know, he one of the ones that really shaped how music is now. So I'm giving him his flowers on that one. Now I'm gonna ask you, what what are what is well, you said he taught you how to make beats? Mm-hmm. What were what were some of the key things that he taught you about making beats that you can pass off to the up and comer beat makers? Sure. Don't think. Don't think. That's it. No, it's it's a couple. Like like I said earlier, like I don't go, I don't think about shit when I make beats. He taught me. Don't think. Oh. Just do you. You feel me? And don't do this shit just to do it. Like, if you want to make beats, he told me, if you want to make beats, make beats because you want to make beats. Mm-hmm. Do this shit because you want to do it, not just because you feel me. Like, you know what I mean? Like a little hobby or something. Like, mm-hmm. that's that's the mindset that I had when I decided to take this shit seriously. Okay. You know I mean? I'm, I'm not doing it just to do it no more. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to tell everybody that's trying to make music, like, don't play with it. You feel me? Like, put your all into it because that ain't going to happen overnight. It's not, and it's not going, and it's not going to happen if you plan with. You got to put your hours in. You got to put that time in. Like it's, you gonna cry. <laughs> you feel me? You want metaphorically? You gonna bleed? You feel me? Like, but just know if you really put the time in, you are gonna really see results. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Just put the time in. Okay. Okay. So you, you said okay. You started. You started nine years ago. Um, what what were some of the key moments that helped you? get into these rooms that you are in today? What were some of the key moments, same, some maybe might have, you went to a party and you met somebody or, you know? Shit, so just going down Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Like, building relationships down there. I mean, we're going down there for like six years now. Like, mm-hmm. Just back and forth. And, you know, I met a lot of people, I met some people through, uh, through Pyrex. I met some people down there just off of me being in the studio. Mm-hmm. You know, just, networking so I can go down the land and I, I got a lane I got I got motion mm-hmm. you know some people say it's not a matter of what you know it's about who you know All right can you can you say that as far like you said some of your key moments was from networking and talking to people like oh, yeah. Yeah. so so you can definitely say some of the key things to you know um, getting into the spaces you want to get into right. is networking and talking to the people that you like for say like talking to the people that you know if you want to be a YouTuber you talk to a YouTuber mm-hmm. type shit so it's that type of thing yeah hell yeah like you gotta think like I met other producers like there's some shit that I ain't know other producers I'm getting around them so enough free game you feel me we teaching each other shit you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying like that's that's the beauty of music though like mm-hmm. that should really bring a lot of people together yes it does and I've, bring, I've it seen just different sounds you feel me different cultures different backgrounds whatever like that should be bringing a lot of shit together. Yes, that shit is magic, bro. Oh, yeah. Shit is magic, and you are a magician. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, okay, 
talk about um, what is this is this is like a trendy question that a lot of producers get. What's how much? What's the most you charge for a beat? The most I've charged, or what do I charge? I mean, how much you've charged, and like, like you, you like dealing, like payment went through, and how much was the most I ever got for a beat? For one, one beat, one particular. beat. Five racks. Hit the applause again, baby. Okay, five racks. Okay, and how much was your first? How much did you sell your first ever beat for? <laughs> the first beat I ever sold. First beat you yeah. ever sold, yes. Fifty dollars. Fifty dollars. This is when I was like first like getting serious, like getting trying to get with the business side of it, like selling mm -hmm. beats and shit like that. Because at first I was just making beats just to make beats, mm -hmm. just have them loaded up on my laptop. And mm -hmm. when I started selling shit. I sold the one of my masks for like fifty dollars. That's hard. Um. Um, honestly, just to look at, just to look at how, honestly, I think as how you can look at it as you started, so you sold your first beat for fifty dollars, and then you, and now nowadays you're selling this shit for five racks or up to more. It seemed, it literally, it literally, um, you like you can you appreciate the the grind and and everything you've done to get everything that's happened. Mm -hmm. um, I want to ask you what what were some of the things, what were some of the key moments, what were some of the key turns that made your sound that I mean do you, would you say that your sound has shifted since you started or would you say it evolved what was some of the um, I'm, that's the first question I say it evolved mm -hmm. because like I don't just make the same sound and shit like I'm definitely more versatile with you know how I you know put my beats together I simplified my shit too like I was doing a lot mm -hmm. I was doing way too much but then I learned how to really you know, I learned the sauce for real so, I, I say it evolved, mm -hmm. and I and I and I perfected my sound. What is your favorite part of making the beats? Is it the snares? Is it the playing with the keyboard? Yeah. Hi hats, man, either way. <laughs> everybody, everybody that know me know them hi hats. That's that's me. Like, yeah, they hit. Yeah, hi hats. You can t you can honestly honestly from listening to your beats and hearing you say that you can tell that that's. Cause those that's them 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 hoes be them hoes be hoeing, you know what I mean? Mm. They be hitting. <laughs> um, what's what's what's? All right, let's let's get away from the me. Let's talk about some more so personal, but like you know, just fun shit. What, what you do on Friday night and you don't got shit to do? What you what you what you doing? You going to the club? You throw some dollars on some hoes? Studio. Studio. I'm going to the studio. I might. I ain't gonna lie to you. If I ain't I ain't gonna cap to you like. Like I just, I'm always in the studio, mm. cause I make beats at the house. You know, you know, it's I'm a, you know, it's a term, you know, it's a term for niggas like you that's always in the studio. What? You're a vampire. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I didn't put in them long nights. Uh -huh. I, I didn't, yeah, I didn't slept in the studio. I ain't go home but to take a shower. Matter of fact, no, studio had a shower. Damn, that's hard. That was, was a good studio. What studio was that? Was you sleeping in? Yeah, our studio. I studio. I done took a shower in there a couple of times. Is it a good shower? Architect too. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Tess put that studio. That's Tess studio. Mm, I don't. Uh, tech? That's Tess. Tech. Tess. Tess. Yeah. Oh, with an S. Yeah, for one of Tess. Oh, oh, he oh. Free Minds. Oh, shit, okay. That's his studio. What you call him? He, he put that motherfucker together, though. Like, that's that's a good studio. Shit. Got a nice, nice shower in there. So. Mm. But no, I done did that a couple of times. Architect, OVs on uh, Half a Road. Child Nash, that's the only studio. Child Nash, now the and question, Now this question that I asked you it might be too personal. Um, this is um a, a, this is a, a this is a myth that's that 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 nobody really talks about, that a lot of people do. Have you ever had sex in the studio? <laughs> uh, no. No. Okay. Had sex in okay. 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 I'm, it's I'm happening okay. with, it's, with other people. People I know. You've seen it. I Not like seen it, seen it I, but been, like you, I, but you know, you know, you know, yeah, you know. Yeah, I'm, a lot of people don't be knowing about that. That how niggas' hoes I mean, be getting shit. lost in that studio. I mean, look, <laughs> it be females that be with it. You feel me? Hey man, them, them 808s, turn I'm gonna tell you something. like this. I'm gonna keep it hundred. Keep I got it some, I got some, some dog ass homeboys. Like, yeah, you don't have to expound. Them niggas, yeah. You don't have. I to love them to death, but they, yeah. 
they they fuck the they fuck the girl in the studio. They they can't say they can't have that. They don't got the same answer as you. <laughs> it's okay. You can be honest. This yeah. is a safe place. Shit, I mean, it happened. You feel me? Like, and it, this it's the studio. You feel me? It's mm-hmm. just like the studio is not just how the I think it is. Is a safe place. Is that, it is a safe place. You it's can, like a whole. You, you can do whatever you want there. You feel me? Just as long as you ain't fucking with the vibe. You mm-hmm. feel me? You ain't. You ain't doing too much. You ain't doing no crazy ass shit. Like as long as you chilling, like you can just kick it. You feel me? Mm-hmm. We working regardless. Okay. That's a vibe. You feel me? That's how niggas really work. Like that's how shit get done. Like you, when you focus on music, like you don't really need hella people in the studio with you. But you know the people that's around, that's really around you. Mm-hmm. Well, that shit a vibe. All that shit gonna be, yeah. yeah. I've seen, I've seen the vibe. That shit is beautiful. That shit is uh, like magic, bro. That shit gonna be. That shit genuine. I wish mm-hmm. like like it really like if every person could see that and feel that like mm-hmm. if, if if we can put the price tag on that nigga mm-hmm. we'd be millionaires. Yeah, even <laughs> if that do mean you, somebody getting fucked in the studio. It is what it is, <laughs> nigga. Toss it up to the game. It's the yeah. game. That's why I be telling you like that's why I'm like yeah you don't know no rappers right? If you having an accent like yeah it's not no joke you ain't going to know ain't no nigga gonna ask you for no sing on the chorus I don't want to hear none of that shit. <laughs> it's like no I'm joking I'm joking. But um, you say you go to Atlanta a lot. You've been going there for about you said six years. Um, what's your favorite things to do in Atlanta? What's the, what's the vibe on Atlanta? I've been there personally about like once or twice. Strip clubs. Mm-hmm. Studio in the strip club. Studio first. You feel me? But it's like all the strip clubs. You can get food there. Mm-hmm. Like, you and the just, wings. You can sit down and eat. You feel me? Like cheetah. You can sit down and eat like at an actual table. Like yeah, for real. They got and tables. Get some in good this. ass food. And the couches don't be that bad. No, they don't. They be actually comfortable. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Um, what are you so do do you? Can I can I still? Can I, I can't ask no questions about Pyrex. That's off the table. Yeah, let's just chill on that. Let's just chill on that. Okay. Um, you you said you you said your favorite thing. You said your favorite. You said you said one of your favorite slappers that you. That you've been, um, do you listen to your own beats? Like, do you listen to your own songs that, that come out? And stuff? Um, if it's out, <laughs> if it's out, you don't be getting the, you don't be getting the unreleased Jeffy Mac. Yeah, I do. Do you be getting the scoop? You know, on my shit. Yeah, like. Oh yeah. Okay, so you be in the, the oh, cause I just be having access. People don't, it really, it, it, people don't really shit. be in them rooms, and they just see I, that shit up sometimes. Like, I don't even gotta be in the room. I get them songs though. Mm-hmm. You feel me, like. That's one thing with me. Like I can't, I keep it hundred with you. If you can't trust me enough to have a song in my phone, like one, I'm the producer. You feel me? Like I'm going to tell you if it's bullshit or not. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna tell you what you need to work on. I'm gonna tell you if you gotta fix something. We can we gonna have a talk about it. You feel me? Because this is what that's what music is. You feel me? You gotta make the music. You gotta really be. You gotta be on your craft. And you producers know? know as much as about music, if not more, than the artists. Right, like this is art. You feel me? Like we we want our art to be, you feel me? Well put together. You feel what I'm mm-hmm. saying? I I can't fuck with a nigga that don't send me no songs. Like mm-hmm. I ain't met nobody like that yet. But if I do, I just can't fuck with. Them. Mm-hmm. Okay. So one thing, one thing that um, when you when when a lot of people get into the beat making industry. Another a thing that they that they start learning or hearing about is like placements. Like, what is a placement? And mm-hmm. hearing about placements, you don't have to really explain what a p- placement <coughs> is. Um, I'm talking to Dwight. Okay, you don't have to really explain what a placement is. It's, they can just Google it somewhere. But kind of explain um, how, because you know, what was the first your first experience and what tips would you give about getting placed? I mean, shit. I mean. You talking about like my first major placement? I mean, just period. You know, placement is a placement. Oh, I mean, it was just. I ain't gonna lie. Like my first placement, I was there. Like I was in the room, so it's like it's different. You can get your first placement sending a beat to, you know, I like I got engineers from different studios that I, I'm locked in with. They'll tell me, hey, so and so here, you got a pack for them, send something. Oh, that's all. You right. feel me? Like I, I got my shit. My first placement, no actually being there. You mm-hmm. feel me? So. It just it, it it's different strokes of different folks. So. Um, do you remember? Do you remember what was going to? Do you remember the placement? Do Do you remember the time it was around your life? Like, did it mean a lot to you? Like, talk to me about your first placement. 
Um, shit, I mean, I was, I was living in the basement at the time. You feel mm-hmm. I me? Mean? I was just, I was just hustling. You feel me? Dogging it out, going to the studio every other night. You feel me? Um, just being locked in, and then just so happened that somebody needs some beats. I wasn't really. I, like I said, I wasn't really pressed on selling shit because I didn't. I wasn't in that part of the the game yet. I was mm. still learning how to make beats. So when I was hard enough, like I got hard enough and got skilled enough to really put my shit out there, like that's that's all it was. I was just in there. You feel what I'm saying? Like it wasn't really. After that though, I just got the ball rolling. Mm-hmm. I started getting. I started just going more, putting my shit out there more, posting it. Going to the studio, letting niggas hear beats like, and plus I had, I had places where I could just go cook up. Like that's hard. A lot of people don't have that. Yeah, like I had an opportunity to just sit there and cook up and, you know, just get better. That's like, hard. And be when you in the studio, like like I said, I would be in there for weeks at a time, like just going back and forth. Like yeah, and me personally, I know it's like. From you can, it's a difference from just having like a room in your house rather than like actually going to, you the, get studio. to go crazy in the studio. It's like a whole different vibe. Mm-hmm. You feel like a whole different nigga in there. You know what I mean? Yep. Um, talk to talk to me about if you had to if you had to describe your beats, not not more so. It it'll, it'll be hard to for all your beats, but if you had to describe more so your latest vibe, your latest beats in four words, three or four words, bam. What's, what, 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 what would it, what would it be? Pissed off. Pissed off. Um, emotional. Mm. Like, I say, like, shit, rage. Like, it's a, it's a lot of shit, though. Like, probably going through a lot of shit. Hey, nigga, I, you never, I, I don't really hear beats. And I think of like the producer, like yo, this producer, like he need to, he he need, he's he good, like mm-hmm. you can feel the, you can almost feel the, feel the shit in your, um, do you, how, do you, it might be a too personal question, but like, how do you feel like your beats? Cause like you, you've made, you've made eight away skull, so that means like in a part, in a way, you are eight away skull. Mm-hmm. So how do you feel like your eight away skull correlates with you? I don't want to really like yeah. say your name, you know. I just, for real, for real, like, I don't know. It's just, you know what I mean, like, I don't know, let's go. You feel me? Like, everybody, everybody, that's my name. You feel me? So it's like, I just came up with 808 Skull, like, after some fact, like, I got signed 808 Mafia. Mm. And Skull Whip It Up was my name before that. So, is that like was you be a rapper? Was you a rapper? Nah, I just, never tried that. Was just nah. I I know how I rap. I, I'm not a rapper though. Uh, I'm a producer. You feel mm-hmm. me? Like I got people around me that I tell you different. But you got them bars, niggas. Tell, niggas, hey, so about that. You feel me? Like it's because it's, it's just because I'm around music. I know. You feel me? I, you catch on to it fast. You feel me? Um, but go back to go back to answering your question about how it correlates with you. Like, let's go whip it up. Was the the name before this though? So. I guess I was just going through the process of maturing as a producer, mm-hmm. and sometimes you got because of the name change. You feel me? Remember I told uh, that's what I told Dre V. Mm-hmm. You feel me? His name used to be Simba. Simba, yeah. That's, I still got him saved in my. I system. helped him come up with Dre V. You feel me? That's hard. Just it's just a part of maturing and just you know evolving as an artist. So that's what I was going through as a producer. And I was back and forth. I had. Like two other names, and then I was just like, "Fuck that!" You mm-hmm. feel me? I just came with eight away scope. I changed my name on Instagram one day, and everybody was, "Hey, yo, change your name!" <laughs> I like, I see you did that. You feel me? Like, I fuck with that. Yeah. What would What would you? I know it's a, it's 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 we not we we gonna we gonna bring it to the forefront, everybody. It's it's millions of it's millions of creators and millions of influencers that's mm-hmm. thinking about changing their name. Mm-hmm. What would you give, like, what do you think about when you change it, when you think of a name for something or somebody? Shit. Yeah, you can't think about that shit too hard because you won't be able to get come up with nothing. Mm-hmm. You just got to, like, just, I mean, be in a moment one day and just it just hits you. Mm-hmm. Like, that's what it did with me. It's just, like, I was signed with 808 at the time. I just had signed. And then 
Like, everybody just calling me Sco. Like, don't know about You feel me? Like, so I just... I was put just, it together, I nigga. Put, put it in together, the sandwich. Everything like, tastes good That's in the sandwich. it. Yeah. You feel me? Like, 808 Sco. Yeah. That's hard. That's actually hard. And, and another thing is, I wanted to change my name so it would look better on Instagram. Mm. Like... And I wanted to look like Skull Whip It Up. And, and that shit honestly, long as a bitch. And like, I had a mistake, and I thought it was Skull Wizard. Oh, no. Nah. So uh-huh. I had fuck, I had you fucked up. That's the first time I heard that. For real? Yeah. That's what I hear, like, if I'm listening. That's what I hear. But I had you fucked up. I admit it. <laughs> but um, tell me about, um, talk about your talk about your future. What's going on? What, you, what, do you, what do you see? You don't have to really give the sauce. But what's, what's in your back pocket? Like, what's about to happen? Shit. I got a lot of shit on the way, like. I got a lot of shit, like, I'm locked in with, uh, with a lot of people down Atlanta right now. Like, I got a lot of crazy shit boiling right now. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, other than that, like, probably got some shit coming through in the city, like, soon. Mm. Soon. You can't give us no, can't put no exclusive on here? Uh, nah, because I ain't. You don't fuck with me like that? Nah, 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 <laughs> hell nah. You know, you know you my boy, um, yeah. No, I ain't, I just don't. It's like I don't, I'm not. I'm unsure right now. I just know I got certain shit that's not released. Mm. Just don't know exactly. You know the dates is and shit like that. I get you know, told everything last minute. <laughs> you know me, me, me personally. I know as an artist and shit. When you when it come around that time, we use time to drop. Like hella shit get tricky. Like oh yeah, as far as dates and you know bunch of music. Fucking loops you gotta fucking go through and jump through. And I feel like if if a, if a rapper is telling you, if an independent rapper is telling you that shit was easy, you just put that shit out there. Like I don't res- I don't respect the work if you just threw that shit out there like that. You know what I mean? You gotta do something. Like put a video on that bitch. Yeah, you just, it's all about just it's just all about how you push it. You feel me? Like you got I know I know dudes is marketing geniuses. You feel me? So it's like to, you might have when to you when you see their results, you know like oh I right, that's expected. You might have to give me that number. I need my need them. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm in the process of trying to get that shit, you know, straightened out for myself. Mm-hmm. Um, nigga, you have a face tattoo. Mm-hmm. Tell me about that. I want to know. Oh, that's my son's birthday. Oh. 12, 30, 20. Oh, what, no, what's this? His birthday coming up. His birthday coming up. Oh, what, what, you, what you, do you, you got anything planned? You don't got, if it's too personal, you don't got. Shit, I'm throwing a party at the crib. Hmm. You feel me? Got some got family coming over. That's beautiful. Yeah, uncles and his, his you feel me? It's awesome shit. Ain't nothing really. I just know he getting spoiled like a motherfucker though. He better be. Really if you, if my father was eight away sco, mm-hmm. I'm good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a, that's yeah, that's the deal. I got that right before he was born. Mm. Like she was in the hospital. And she, they called me and said, hey, this is probably going to be the day. Like, and they predicted, my girl predicted it. You and you got I mean? it before? I got it before. Nigga, what if yeah. it was wrong? Yeah, it wasn't wrong. Because <laughs> the doctor, me and the doctor really talked. She said, look, because he was full term. Mm. So she went through the whole 40 weeks. And it was like a couple of days after the 40 week mark. And it was like, look, I don't know what it was, but. Oh, matter of fact, no, her water broke and we went to hospital. She was in labor. You know, she was in labor for like 18 hours. So she got put on, uh, what's that shit that they put on you to make it numb? Uh, epidural, something like that. Epidural. Yeah, epidural. They put her on that. He wouldn't come out. Like, it just wasn't nothing happening for real. And then I, I just went and got tatted. I had my homeboy pull up my crib real quick because I was there picking up clothes and shit. And. I don't know. I just had him pull up. I'm like, man, put his birthday on me. That's hard. Now, keep it 100. You don't got to lie. This is a safe place. Did it hurt? No. It didn't hurt? What? It's a face tattoo. It didn't hurt? Shit took like five minutes. It didn't hurt, though? Mm-mm. None yeah. of my tattoos hurt. You're a gangster. You got the whole Jiffy mm-hmm. Mac? Yeah, you're a gangster. Man, gangster. Ain't that much of it. None of my shit hurt, though. Like, what? I'm going to be 100. Like, it's not, don't get it twisted. It's times when it get to a certain part. And you're like. They feel a little weird. Yeah. Oh. It don't hurt. Mm. It's like more comfortable than anything. Like, mm. I just be want to tell the nigga like, yo, all right, come on, yo, get past that part. <laughs> I be real calm. I, I watch get like I'm watching him tap me. Like, I don't look away. I don't. I usually put headphones on or something. While I listen to my music out loud. Mm. You feel me? But 
I watch them for the most part. Shit, that's gangster. Yeah, I'm a hoe. I need to get my shit together. You know, when I, I got this shit right here, whenever I was over that bitch, like, <coughs> you would have thought I was on my period. I was a hoe. I don't know. I ain't got nowhere like right there. I don't know. Everybody said the chest hurt. Yeah, it wasn't. I got home. I got I got people like my girl got something right here. Mm-hmm. I would I would agree oh, with you. Bone. I would agree with you and just say like it doesn't really hurt. It's just necessary. It's, it's just more, don't, if, uncomfortable. If it's it's just like a vibration that you you know, it's in, it feel like it's in your ear. You feel mm-hmm. me? Because how loud the buzz is on that gun, like it just sounds like it's right there in your ear. So it's more annoying. Mm-hmm. But it's the sound. That's a mental thing. I, but the pain level, I'm good. Mm. Um, you got any questions for me? Anything? Shit, no, not really. Oh, I mean, um, another question that I, I know, I have one more question before I wrap it up. Um, I, I think everybody. I don't want to really get into people's like personal life. And like talk about like who you with or like you sing or anything. I figure everybody has been in love before. So if you had to give your piece of advice to somebody about quote unquote love, it's kind of like out there, far fetched. She don't got nothing to do with beats. I'm sorry. I should have asked so, you a question about hi hats. <laughs> <Steve. laughs> um, just be patient. Mm. Be patient. Um, it's just relationships stressful. Love is family stressful, but yeah, I mean, I'm in a relationship and I've been with her for five years. You feel Damn. Me? She, I haven't been she, with anything she, for five years. She been, she been right there. You feel me? So we just try to do the best we can. That's beautiful. That's great. We got. I mean, we love each other though, but we got baby boy at the end of the day. Yeah. So we we got it together for him. No, for real. We, you feel me? Like it's been four years ago. It'd been different. <laughs> No, shit, I, I definitely seen how shit, I mean, just seeing like how people around me has had a child and like their relationship got stronger, you know. I mean, I, I, that's, that's definitely something that I've seen. And I'm definitely not rushing to get into it, but it's just, just seeing, just seeing, just talking to you about it is, is definitely um, something to, to be excited for. Um, hope if you need to come back, anything new dropping, anything you need to get out to the world, this platform is open to you. Yeah. You can come back anytime. I do got, I got an album I'm working on. It's album. called It's called Up the Skull. Mm. It's in the works right now. Um, the date to be, you know, to mm. turn. Is it? Is it? Is it like? It's not you rapping. It's your beats and everything. And it's gonna have like. It's gonna have something on there. From you? Yeah. <laughs> oh shit! Yo, you were just talking on that shit about how you don't be rapping. I mean, I don't rap, but I mean, I got them. I okay. got the songs. They hard. You feel me? Never know what they could do. Um, I'm more so. I'm just focused on the producer side of it, though. Okay. Because I'm, I'm, I made every song that's on there. Mm. So. You've been a part of. You was a part of the. You put it yeah. up. Oh, it's all my beats. One last question. I'm gonna slide in. Shorty, telling me to wrap up. One last question. I'm gonna slide in. If uh, I know you, you've been your ears. Your ear is perfect for music and, mm-hmm. and production of music. For other artists coming up and other producers coming up, more so other artists. And they're thinking of a song right, you know, they're thinking of a song like what what is give like two or three things that that like that that needs to be in a song as far as lyrical wise. What needs to be in a song? Shit. I mean not needs, because you know you could do anything that should do anything, but I'm saying what you what do you think what needs to be in a song? Lyrically, not beats. Cause we know you got that, that air, that air t- I'm gonna tell you. You need to put them real motherfucking you need to put everything behind that shit. Like, I, it ain't no, it ain't really nothing like physical, like on the beat. It ain't really no instrument that needs to have it. You need to put that shit behind that. Like, if you gonna talk that shit, put some pain, put some emotion, put put whatever, just put you behind that shit. Mm. Push that shit out. You feel me? Stand for something, you gonna fall for anything. Exactly. Man. Um, this has been the number one podcast in in Baltimore in the world. You know, you can whatever the titles, you can put it up whatever you want. You know what I mean? Talking my shit. So I'm playing, I'm playing. <laughs> this is the, the podcast. Tune in next time to the Long live show. White boy. Long, oh fuck! I didn't even get to talk about white boy. Huh. We need to talk about white boy. Fuck that. <laughs> we need to talk about white boy. What's going? What's what's? Let's talk about that. That need his own part. What you want to know? 
Where was you at when it happened? I was getting locked up. Mm. I went to court that day. And I got locked up in court. Fighting uh fighting the case. Mm. I call I call my I call my homeboy. He tell me, like, it's two of my homeboys together. He was like, yo, they hit twin. I'm like, who? Everybody, you feel me, that knew me and White, everybody know we called each other twin. So, and it was like, because, like, it was one point in time where people said, me and him look like each other, like we was brothers or something. You feel me? So. I can see that. I called up town. They said he got hit. I ain't believe it for real. So I just hung up, called my girl, told her, you know, check his Instagram. She's talking about this whole bunch of black heart, uh, broken hearts and shit under his pictures. So I was already, I was going through intake, you feel me? So I ain't get to, you know, go to the funeral or nothing. I ain't yeah, really get, intake, I ain't get to say goodbye or nothing. Yeah. Yeah. So I just came home and it fucked me up, though, because I ain't really get to really deal with it. I ain't what, gonna say goodbye. What do you know? if you what what do you now I'm gonna ask you what what happened at what what was going what what did you do? What happened after With what? After he passed. What what was what did you do? What happened? What was going on? Shit, I had a lot of time to sit there and really, you know, reflect. Like that was a sign I needed to get the fuck out of Baltimore. Like Like, bro ain't deserve that and that's he was a, an example, like Shit can happen to anybody, you feel me? I just ain't, I ain't got time to be that or anybody in my family, you feel me? Like, I'm gone, you feel me? When I dip, I ain't coming back. <laughs> I, I love Baltimore, but mm-hmm. if I want to grow, then I can't grow from right here. It's a sale in here. Yeah, you feel me? This is high as the aquarium go, nigga. It's a trap, you feel me? You either dead or in jail here, and I ain't, I already done been the one. I ain't trying to be the other, you feel me? And I got a son to raise. I ain't. And I tell niggas all the time. Like I told my girl the other day, I'm going to finish what bro started. You feel me? Like, I'm going to keep going. Somebody got to. Because it wasn't. Shit. It, was, it was everything. Niggas going to put on for bro. Like, everybody doing it in their own way. You feel me? Roddy doing it. Chaz doing it. You feel me? Mon. You feel me? Amon, the producer, he, he putting on. You feel me? It's just to put on, you feel me? Like, everybody feeling, but we gonna put on for him in some way, shape, or form. We ain't gonna let that shit die down at all. You feel what I'm saying? Long live white boy. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. What, let me ask you one more question. You don't have to answer it if it's too personal or anything. Mm-hmm. What What was some of the things that he left you with? What's, what, did, what did he, what did you, what can you say that he taught you? Matter of fact, it's funny that you asked me that because I was looking at this earlier. So my pictures, hold on. Picture. Okay. A couple months ago, he was uh, he was on the phone, and bro used to just be he he a funny motherfucker like he used to geek all the time. He called me one day, it was turned up in that mood. I don't know what the fuck was got into him, but he told me, he said, "Yo, next picture you post, make this shit caption, life is love and love is life," and I put that. February eighth this this year, twenty twenty three. Damn, that's beautiful. I was in Puerto Rico, mm-hmm. celebrate my birthday. So, you feel me? That's when I came across that. It just I instantly remember like that's the bro gave me that cash. You feel me? That's something that I've been just trying to say in my head. You feel me? It's just something that he left with me. You feel me? Like that's beautiful. And he left a lot of shit with me. Bro. Well, for one thing, if you're watching this, it's a lot of gems. It's a lot of things. Hopefully, you had a pencil and paper and wrote something down. Hopefully, you can take something from this because I learned a lot personally that I'm going to use. I'm going to take the sauce just a little bit. You gave me a little smidge. You gave me like a little honey, like a little McDonald's honey packet size. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to take that and run with it. Um, uh, Is this going to be, are we going to have a part two? You going to double back? Shit. I'll fl- I'm a flyer, nigga. I come on. Oh, you know, we're going we gonna to talk about that. We're going to talk about that. All right, bro. Um, tune in next time for the next interview. Long live white boy. RRP forever. And we out. Tune in next time.